Second, finance, uh, Second Minister for Finance, Indrani Raja, also responded to the NMPs, saying that action needs to be taken as a matter of principle, especially since the High Court had already made its judgment known. In response to Ms. Anthea Ong, this is not sub judice because we are not making any suggestion of that the findings were right or wrong. In fact, what this motion does is accepts the findings as they are and it asks between now and the time where it may or may not be reversed or upheld, what do you do? And what is the standard of conduct? Do you simply disregard what the judgment says or do you say that pending the appeal and whilst there is a cloud hanging over the heads of these town councillors, do they stand down? Do they wait and s then see what the Court of Appeal says? Or do they say, well, in the meantime, let's just, you know, it doesn't really matter if there's a judgment, I carry on as usual. Now, in her speech, she asserted that in not recusing themselves, the Workers' Party MP's standard of governance comes under the spotlight. But this drew a response from Workers' Party Chief Pritam Singh, who rejected this accusation. Imagine if you had a WP government. If there were to be a government official that has been found liable for something, does that person stand aside when there's an appeal pending? The answer would be no. You just carry on. Business as usual. What kind of tone does that set for government? What sort of signal of governance does that convey? And what sort of parliament endorses that? Because it also says something about us. What it also means is that the next time there's any incident and there's an inquiry pending, the WP has no moral authority to ask for any official to stand down or stand aside whilst the case is being heard or whilst the matter goes for appeal. No moral authority at all. Well, it depends. Is it a criminal matter? Is it a civil matter? What is the dispute? What is the substantive issue here? Those will be the considerations that will be relevant. So I reject any suggestion that the Workers' Party will not have any moral authority to question an issue like that when it comes up. Because, and we know one issue, for, an, for, for example, that came up, it was December 2016, if my memory serves me right, just a few days before Christmas, uh, knowledge of a trifactor prosecution involving Keppel Corporation, Brazil, the US, Singapore comes to light. MPs had slightly less than 48 hours to file a question about this issue. Slightly less than 48 hours. Not a single PAP MP filed a question on the matter. Probably one of the most serious corporate issues, corporate scandals that have affected Singapore's government linked company. So if WP MPs will have no moral authority to file any question on a matter like that, how sure are we that a PAP MP will file a question? Mr. Speaker, that is just such a classic sort of, you know, when there's something happening here, oh quick, I point you, look there, look there because that's a distraction, you know, let's just have a look at something else and not really pay attention to this. We are talking about something else, which is simply this, when you have somebody in a public position, if a court has found that they have done something wrong, there has been a breach of fiduciary duty, lack of integrity, that they have not acted with appropriate candor, does that, position, does that person, should that person remain in position whilst those findings are there, whilst they still stand, and whether or not an appeal is pending. It's a question of what is the standard of governance and what is the appropriate conduct. And what is very clear is that the WP standard of governance and conduct is very different from that of this government. That much is clear. The WP chief also said that he was confident with both Mr. Lau and Ms. Lim's leadership. He also said that he doesn't reject the principle of maintaining high standards of accountability, but he said the WP will vote to reject the motion, calling for the PAP to reveal its true motives behind it. 
However, if Parliament passes the motion, the councillors of AHDC, not the Workers' Party, will discuss the matter and vote on it if that is the collective decision of the Council. In any such decision, Mr. Lowe and Ms. Lim will excuse themselves from voting on the issue and will not participate in any discussion of the matter. On my part, I have absolute trust and confidence in both Ms. Lim and Mr. Lowe's leadership and their continued participation on the Town Council. I speak for myself when I say that I will not be voting for them to be recused from financial matters should it, be de should it be determined so by Council, even if this motion passes. Why? Let me first start with Ms. Lim, who also chairs the Finance and Investment Committee of the Town Council. All of you know that. Let's not fake ignorance and say, wow. It's, it's in the judgment that has been read. Noted. She's still in charge, yes. As chairman of the town council between 2011 and 2015, despite challenging circumstances and under tremendous pressure, Ms. Lim led the town council to manage the estate without major disruption of service affecting the lives of residents. Ms. Lim as vice chair has contributed much over the years to the positive transformation of the town council today. For the information of the House, for the latest annual report, AHTC's auditors have submitted an unqualified audited report to the Council, which has been forwarded to MND for onward tabling to Parliament. The accumulated surplus position and all other matters will be in that report. That said, any decision to consider a recusal for Ms. Slim and Mr. Lowe is for the individual Town Councillors to make and AHTC will act in accordance with their decisions.